What's up guys? It's your boy Justin back with another movie review. Today I'm reviewing a Japanese crime film, New Battles Without Honor and Humanity, Volume 1. I guess this is a, this is like the first film in uh, uh, crime dramas by Kenji Fukusaku, who you might know as the director of probably one of the like most famous Japanese cult classic films of all time, 2000's Battle Royale. Like we would, the Hunger Games franchise wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Battle Royale. Right, and Battle Royale is probably one of my favorite Japanese films of all time. So yeah, that this director, I I even know this guy. This guy was was old when he made the Battle Royale, right? And uh, he did a lot of Yakuza films, right? And the Yakuza film I'm reviewing, obviously, is New Battles Without Honor and Humanity Volume One. Awesome, awesome, awesome title, man. You got. You gotta give it to the title. The movie's worth watching just for the title alone, right? That The movie is an hour 39 minutes. It's pretty much rated R, and it came out in 1973, starring Bunta Sagawara, Hiroki Matsukata, Nobuo Kanaki, Tatsuo Yamamiya, and Tsunahiko Watsu, Watsutase. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name. So the... The movie takes place in post-war Japan. Like, the movie takes place between 1946 to, I think, it, like, at, by the end of the film, it's like 1956. Uh, it takes place over a 10-year period, right? Where, at first, you follow th this main character, Hirono, uh, right? Who is part of this gang, right, in Hiroshima, right? And this is during... The movie starts off in post-war Japan, where there's a lot of crime everywhere, right? Um, you get like a little montage in the beginning of the movie where they show off like, you know, uh, characters that w would be future uh, future bosses of the Yamanaka, I think that was, I think it was the Yamanaka family, right? Which is the main crime family that the main character belongs to, right? In the future, which is apparently this film actually is based off historical events, right? Of uh, Yakuza war that went on in Hiroshima during uh, that this time period, right? And the movie, the montage is very brutal in the beginning of the film where you see like uh, American GIs tr trying to um uh, pretty much, uh, have sex with a woman against her will in front of a crowd of people. Nobody, nobody was, tries to stop them, except for our main characters. You have the, you have a montage of uh, they're showing our, our other characters with, with their name introductions, where like they're getting into fights with other gangs. You have two guys get their arms cut off, right? And it's super, it's super brutal. Yeah, it, the violence is fake. It's fake as fuck, but it's super bloody and it's unexpected. Unexpected. The movie, it, it, it definitely is like a very sleazy crime film, right? For the seventies, right? So yeah, it, it starts off with the with the crime montage and like it starts off with one of the. Uh, the characters uh, gets almost one of our characters gets killed almost gets killed by uh, by a drunk guy right with a katana right and our main character Hirono uh, who seems to be the bravest of the guys the goes uh, b borrows a gun from Sakai right who seems to be kind of the leader of the group and goes to kill him right he goes to prison Right, and where he meets this other guy, right, who is from a different crime family called the Doi crime family, right, who, uh, they become friends in prison, and I forget, I think the guy's name was Yama, I, it's, there's so many names in the movie, I can't remember, but the guy, the guy was a good guy, right, 
and he he comes up with this pl because of over crime because of overpopulation he comes up with a plan to get himself out of prison by uh, committing harakuri where he he smuggled in like a razor blade and and cut himself right and he needed like the our main character Horono to like you know call to you know save like you know call for the jailers right so yeah, let's just call him Yamagichi. Yama, it's like Yamatagi, I think the guy's name is, but let's call him Yamagichi. First. So Yamagichi gets out of gets out of prison, right? Because uh, they can't they can't handle prison. The prison um, doctors can't handle right uh, suicides. So he gets out and he he gets the boss of the Yamata Yamanaka family. To free our 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 main character Horono, right, from uh, from prison, and you know him and his gang of his gang of brothers go to join Yamatagi family. So the first hour of the film, or first like forty or fifty so minutes, right, you follow the story of Horono and his his friend that he made in prison. Right, who who while they were in prison, they became sworn brothers, right? And um, they became yeah, they became sworn brothers, and they're caught in between this uh, war between their two families when a politician goes to Yamanaka, uh, the boss of the Yamanaka crime family, to you know basically kidnap a guy so um, so some block get passed. So a law wouldn't get passed or something, right? And that causes friction between the two families, right? And uh, it ends. And the, the movie is just—it's a stylized crime film, but the movie is just like the movie just set sets up relationships and just sh sets up like constant betrayals <laughs> where people where people who are supposed to be best. People were supposed to be sworn brothers, you know, that ties lo lo loyalty, loyalty, end up betraying each other, killing people, right? It's it's pretty much like the fucking Sopranos, right? <laughs> Where yeah, characters like end up betraying each other. Like the fir the people who you thought were the main characters of the movie, one one gets killed and the other one goes to prison, right? And then it just goes into you follow the remnants of the Yamanaka, the main crime family, right? And how they're going to, they're splintering off and get, going wars with each other, right? Betraying each other, right? All thanks to the the politician from the early early part of the film who started the whole fucking gang war comes back again, right? Uh, yeah, and the the, the, mo the movie ends with just like you know. Uh, it, the movie just ends with like a funeral and like a deck, a, a, a funeral and a decoration of like, fuck, the, you're all full of shit. Fuck you. I don't care if you guys paint a fucking target on my back for the rest. <laughs> so the, yeah, man, it's the movie was just. It's one of those movies where it's not like your stereotypical mobster film where like a lot of stereotypical mo mobster films are basically rise and fall films right here it's more like you're 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 getting a like a, a peek into the life of like you know these mobsters right and how like full of shit like all the oaths and loyalties are it's pretty much like Game of Thrones at points where it's like you have characters like so slowly manipulating each other and then like back backstabbing right subtle betrayals like there's a point in the movie where like uh, a character dies miss gets sold out by the cop by sorry by, by somebody right who we don't know to the cops right it dies so it's not it's not until like the end of the movie where like someone was able to piece it together. It's like oh fuck, right? So yeah, it's just, it's a very like interesting movie, right? Because it it definitely does not romanticize. 
I mean, I, I guess in a, some way it kind of romanticized some of the, like, you know, mobster characters. But really, it does paint, like, a realistic look. And, uh, yeah, these people are full of shit. Like, the, the people who get fucked over the most in this, mo are, in this movie are the people who were, like, you know, who, who are the more e idol idolistic and more, like, honorable characters. Hence why the movie's, like... Called uh, New Battles Without Honor Humanity, right? Yeah. So, and I love how like there's a lot of great scenes where like you know characters who act like tough. Uh, there are scenes where you see characters who act tough or look w weak, and they're uh, you know act pathetic, and then like later on in the film it'll like switch where like a character who was acting like a tough big guy looks weak at the like you know. At, Near the end of the film, are the people who were like, who were acting like you know, punks who didn't want to go like, who didn't want to go to war with the uh, Doi and leave it up to Verono, the main character. Now are now are big shots that are going out betraying people, murdering people, right? Starting wars, right? So yeah, I, I just I, I don't know, I really liked the liked the movie. Right? Uh, it's definitely it. I I think it's not as much of like. If you're someone who liked Takeshi Kitano films, this this is stylized like those films, but they're not. I wouldn't say they're like you know art house movies like you know Kitano movies can be, right? This is I would say this is more closer to like if I were to like point out like a Kitano movie that this is close to, it's probably closer to Outrage, right? But uh, but yeah, this is more like of an epic, you know, like crime. Saga, like, cause, like, like I said, the movie is just you follow this, uh, like, the set of characters for like ten year period, over a ten year period, where they're just constantly backstabbing each other, going to wars, killing, murder each other, <laughs> and there are sex scenes and titties for the people who want it, looking for that, and there's lots of blood. So if you're someone who likes sleazy like crime films. Sev sleazy 70s films that is, there is plenty of that but yeah I, I yeah yeah so if I were to give the movie a rating I would say it's 8 out of 10 and the movie's on Tubi and I'm definitely going to be checking out more of these fucking films alright guys that's it for this video peace